Well, hi everyone. It's Monday, so it's time for our activity for this week. Uh, I'm going to be showing you how to waterproof some matches and make a little bit of a wet weather kit. But while I'm out here, I may as well get the Kelly kettle going and have a brew. Now, while I'm putting the water in here, well done, Matthew. I saw your video from last week. It was extremely funny. Uh, so if you've not seen that yet, guys, I'll put it in our description below. So with the Kelly kettle, if you remember it, it's a live flame kettle. So we need to actually light a fire to make it work. But it's an extremely efficient kettle. I've segregated my wood from my kindling to pieces that are about as the size of my thumb. They're the uh, thickest pieces in there. I've got a fire lighter, which I'll show you how to make. And I'm just about to light it. Uh, once I've got the Kelly kettle on, I will show you some tips and tricks about how to make some poor weather alterations to matches and fire lighters so you can use them, maybe put them in your backpack, use them when you're doing an expedition. So I'm just popping my uh, tinder on and my thinner branches. I haven't had my uh, shredded wheat or Weetabix this morning because I can't snap them in half, but hey ho. Why don't you have a little go at doing this? You obviously don't need to use a Kelly kettle, but why not just have a little fire in your backyard? Well, obviously with your parents' permission. And if you do, make sure you set it on something that isn't flammable. I've actually put down a fireproof sheeting uh, because as you can see, I am on some wooden decking. So it's very important that what is underneath your fire protects is protected. Uh, especially if you put it on grass for example because you will burn and scald the grass and your parents will not be happy so make sure you get permission but why not have a little go at lighting a fire in your back garden this week and as you can see i'm just feeding the kelly kettle now uh, just putting enough wood on to get it boiling so once i've done this we can go on and i'll show you some of our activity for today uh, you might be wondering why i'm doing the voice and the description afterwards it's because i look like a complete nutter i live next to a main road and people can hear me talking to you through my hedge and i get some very weird looks so i've decided i'll record it and i'll speak over it afterwards i think it's called annotation not 100 percent sure though so here i'm putting my biggest bits in now and that will keep the kelly kettle going long enough to get a nice boiling cup of water for my cup of tea. Uh, I'm making sure that all the uh, branches that I put in or twigs that I put in don't have a load of bits coming off them because it'll be hard to get it in the hole at the top. Those of you who've used the Kelly Kettle will know what I'm talking about. Okay, so that is that. So we're going to get started now and the first thing I'm going to show you once I get these matches out is how to weatherproof some matches. The uh, worst thing you can do is get to a campsite and not be able to light your match. So make sure you don't use safety matches. These are just normal matches. You can light them on a stone. The one in my left hand, which I'm pointing to, uh, which I pointed to first, was covered in wax. The one in my right hand wasn't. What the wax does, it keeps the moisture off the match head and doesn't let it get damp or wet. So to do this, you need to have a little tea light. I've had that on for about 10 minutes. And then just simply dip your matches into the wax that's melted in the tea light. Of course, you need to blow the tea light out first or your match will set on fire. But do that and you just dip the match into the wax. The wax will then dry and seal around the match head. And that will keep any water from where you strike the match. And when you do strike the match, it's simple. The wax either falls off or you can pick it off to be able to strike the match. So here you go, just bring that closer, this is one I've just done, you can see the wax goes a little bit up the wood as well, so you're going, always going to have a bit of dry wood and the match head is going to be nice and dry. So that's a little tip there, which you know you can do, put some matches in your bag for when you go on a hike and you know then that you'll always be able to strike the match. Of course, like I said before, don't use safety matches. Cotton wool. Cotton wool is a really good fire starter. All you need to do is dab it with a um, dab it with a match, and you'll be able to light the cotton wool. But something I always do as well is I use some petroleum jelly. Now I couldn't. I usually use um, Vaseline, but I couldn't find any Vaseline, so I'm using Vicks Vapor Rub. It's 
more or less the same stuff. Obviously, Vix is fragrant. Um, but there you go, you just simply rub the vapour up all over the cotton wool and it seals the cotton wool but also acts as a fuel. So the one in my right hand has the has the uh, Vicks Vapor Rub on and I'll light it on my chair now. But what you will need to do, as I'm demonstrating now, is it won't light straight away. If you just take your match and touch, it won't light. It does need a little bit of a starter to get it lit. So if you take the match again, just it won't light. What you need to do is pull the uh, cotton wool apart a bit so you can just get some of the strands in the middle. And now, as soon as you touch that match on, it'll light your fire starter and start burning the vapor rub as well. And that'll burn probably for about three minutes. So burn long enough to get your fire lit. I'll just put that out for now because obviously I don't want a very, very hot bun when I sit down later. So we'll just pop that out. And get rid of that. Okay. And the kettle, believe it or not, is actually boiling now. It only took a few minutes. Uh, so it's boiling away. So I'm going to make a brew. And uh, as I said, why don't you have a little go at those top tips. Uh, waterproofing some matches. Making some fire starters. With the fire starters, what I tend to do is I'll do four or five. And then put them in a little tin. Uh, if your parents eat Turkish delight, that type of tin is perfect. Or if they don't, you can use a little bag, a zip bag. So it's basically to stop the vapor rub going anywhere else or Vaseline or whatever you use. You don't want it to go on all your other kit because it'll get a bit gunky and attract dirt. So put it in a bag so it can be zipped up. There we go. Remember to use the chain when we pour in the Kelly kettle. Uh, I think one of the scouts lost my cork from the end of my chain, but it doesn't matter. It's very old ke Kelly kettle, that now. As you can see, nice steaming hot cup of tea. Add a little bit of milk. Ta -da! And Bob's your uncle. There we go. So, have a go at that this week. Maybe have a little light of a small fire in your backyard. Make sure it's on concrete or paving, something like that. And make sure you have your parents' permission before you do. Because I don't want any angry phone calls. See you later, guys.